forgetting to water them kind of cost us some onions. Yeah. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a hazy, hazy sky, and by the looks of it, it's gonna be even hazier here in a couple hours. I guess that's how it goes these days. I just added the amendments to this bed, and if you watched our last video, I finished up the day by prepping this bed. Um, I added some biochar to that one. This one had biochar. I feel like I'm repeating myself. I, I, I guess I will repeat myself for the viewers that didn't watch yesterday's video. I've got a whole bunch of onions that we started from seed that are ready to go in the ground. And we need to start more seeds of various types and kinds. We need the space inside in our little seed starting area. So to free up some space, it'll free up two whole shelves on our itty bitty little rack. Onions are gonna come out here and they're gonna get planted in the ground. And then I plan on mulching heavy after they're in the ground. Really, I think this year we're gonna utilize really any kind of mulch we can. In our case, we've got lots of hay and it's unsprayed hay, so uh, I'm not worried about it killing whatever we put it on. Like you saw, I added my amendments, um, just kind of raked it into the soil. That way it's not right on the surface to where it can blow away. Uh, we're ready. I'm gonna go grab all those onions and we'll get planting. All right, I am here to grab onions. Would you mind assisting me getting them down there? Yeah, let me make a drink, uh, or relight real quick. Uh, let me make a drink real quick. <laughs> yeah, I that sounded really bad. Yeah, ooh, <laughs> it's, it's 11 in the morning. I need electrolytes! <laughs> I just want electrolytes. <laughs> it makes oh. plants grow. Oh man. <laughs> It's what your body craves. Yeah. Name that movie. You can tell these things are tired of being under oh, that light. Yeah, they really need to go out. These are these were ready like three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Today's the day. It is. All right. I'm gonna try something different this this time. Um, usually we just eyeball. Meg will be on one side and I'm on the other and. One of us will have really straight lines and the other line will like curve and wander. <laughs> so, I'm, <laughs> you know, just someone, one of us. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna use this piece of cattle panel as spacing. Um, we'll plant in the middle and then pull the thing out. I think we can cram a whole lot in there if we do this. Doesn't have to be done. You can literally just cram your onions anywhere, but I think it'd look kind of cool. So, get planting. All right, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we uh, didn't have as good of germination rate as we did last year. Well, they did germinate because we only put in these cells the ones that had germinated. That's true. But they died. They died. So, <laughs> survival rate, I guess. Was... Yeah, the survival rate was pretty low. Forgetting to water them kind of cost us some onions. Yeah. But we filled up a bed in three quarters and halfway through the couple rows of leeks, yeah, I realized. Meg realized, uh-oh, these are the leeks. I mean, we had them labeled, but we did. now they're kind of mixed up halfway through, which is fine. Uh, like, they're the same family. They'll yeah. be fine. Okay. So, I'm going to get these watered in and onions are planted. Cool. Check that off the list. Thank you for helping. You're welcome.
Everything's watered in. I know I said I'm gonna mulch them, but I'm gonna wait until everything has like found its its roots and righted itself. Once they're all standing up, then I can come in with some hay and I'll mulch these so they, uh, so it kind of fights the weeds a little bit because uh, that can be a losing battle out here. So Mom is over here gonna pick some, some of this bolted. Yeah. Uh, collards. collards, thank you. The word, word was escaping me. Right. Look at the honeybees. In the greenhouse. Oh, good. I haven't seen honeybees hardly at all. Is this what's for uh, supper? Yeah, I'm gonna do cabbage rolls for dinner. And we have all this cat or collards that needs to be eaten. So, I'm gonna do it out of collards. Guarantee it'll be good. Oh yeah. They're still pretty sweet even though they're bolting. Get the, Get the nice ones. little ones. Yeah, those are good. Get like this one. It's kind of cool. These are almost done. They are. This is like their last hurrah. So I'm going to pick these big leaves for tonight's dinner. And then these smaller ones I can come back and use for like a collard's dish, a greens dish. I kind of want to let a couple of these go to seed. Yeah, we can. These did great for us. They did. They did really, really well. I don't know if they're a hybrid or not. They probably aren't. But I could ask Laura. Okay. Laura, if you're watching, tell me what variety these collars are. <laughs> One of the most satisfying activities you can do is pull out a cabbage head. <laughs> Break your head off. <laughs> then eat it for dinner. <laughs> so we've never had success growing purple cabbage. Mm -hmm. Apparently the trick is not starting our own seed. Yes. Although I think it's just our seed because I started an entire flat of cabbage. Yeah. Not a single one came up. Same with our collards. Any collards? We've tried to start, they won't sprout. Yeah, that's how they look. But these ones that we bought back in, what was it, September? Yeah, October, uh, October at the Farm Where You Live Festival in October. Yeah, we, uh, we've we had great luck with yeah, these. Yeah, we have. All right. All right, cool. Nice little haul for I not know. even trying. Right? She says she hasn't done anything exciting. Set down the camera. And she whips up a sourdough bull. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Sourdough bull bread loaf of awesomeness <laughs> look at that that weedy stuff. <laughs> weedy stuff and then the nice giant crack why do they put giant cracks it's an expansion ear does it have so, to be so big i mean it doesn't have to be but if you don't put one purposefully where you want it then it's gonna like try to blow out the side and then you'll have like weird shapes so, mm. so it's artistic i mean yeah it is but it's also purposeful so you're a hipster <laughs> Since everybody asks, we need more Meg cooking. I'm going to stick the camera in her face while she's trying to cook something. All right. So what are you making? Stuffed cabbage rolls, like we talked about earlier. I don't know if y'all remember the stuffed cabbage rolls. We haven't had these in a while. Yeah, I, I think it was last time we had cabbage and various green things with leaves that will, you know, be large, <laughs> large enough to wrap stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cabbage rolls are a hit in this house. They're they're really tasty. They're they're good. They're kind of almost like a comfort food around here. Yeah. So give me the speed rundown of. Okay. So I'm just gonna saute up an onion, and then I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna do beef and pork today, just because we have beef, but it's it's a little lean. So I'll throw in some pork. To make it juicy. What'd you find? A head. Oh, oh a dart. Oh, head. A dart. <laughs> Apparently that was exciting. I guess so. I'm gonna brown this onion in here, saute it a little bit. Put the uh, beef and pork in, cook it with some seasoning, probably just salt and pepper and maybe some garlic. And then I'm going to blanch the collard greens to soften them and cut out the really hard ribs and then I'll be able to stuff and roll and put it in a pan with tomato sauce and cook it. Sounds amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And rice, I forget there's rice in it. Yeah, rice to kind of get more body. Beef and pork. They're gonna be bork rolls. Okay, bork cabbage rolls. Bork cabbage rolls. Here you see once again, no measuring whatsoever. Season from the heart. That's right. Dash of this, pinch of that, or oops, a little oops. too much. Yeah, sometimes it's oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What'd you just put in? Time. We don't have enough time for that. 
We actually have a lot of extra time right now. Yeah, didn't you buy like a pound of time I or something? I way too much time. So I guess you could say you have too much time on I your hands. I have way too much time on my hands right now. <laughs> like, herbs are one of those things you buy by the gram. You, right. You buy herbs by the pound, that's a bail. Yeah, well, cause I, yeah, no kidding. I usually buy like garlic powder and minced onion and stuff by the pound. And I was not thinking that herbs are a lot lighter in volume than <laughs> like garlic and stuff. And I bought a pound one time and it came like massive fat. <laughs> now she removes the bones. That's right. So this just softens them so they're a bit easier to roll up. Basically until they turn a bright green, which is almost immediately, but I let them sit a little bit longer. Oh, that was fast. Yeah, yeah, it goes really fast. It's pretty good. And then more leaves. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Now, usually blanching, aren't you supposed to put them in ice water? Yeah, but I'm not going to worry about it because I don't care if they keep cooking. You actually want them fairly soft so they're quite malleable. Yeah. Now, like, you get docked points for presentation because they're not a super bright green, but right. you're also going to cook them in tomato sauce. Yeah, like, we're not so going to see them. they're not going to be bright green anyways. Right. Those look beautiful. Alright, good old leftover rice. Yep. So the rice is just more body. Yeah. Oh, are you are you making a table setting out there? Okay. She's gonna eat. She's creating a magnificent booby trap on the uh, on the steps just outside the door. She's got a blanket on the steps, and she's like apparently doing place settings. But it's fine. We can see her. She's you know ten feet away. It's like perfect. Now, is this considered a pantry? Or is this a larder? Any, I guess it's a larder. This is our under table storage. Yeah. Our in table pantry. Do what you can. Is this our tomato sauce? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Now Time I'm to assemble. Trying to fit it all together. So these are like really, really big, but. a scoop. It's probably gonna take two scoops. Oh yeah. That'd be a big one. We'll make a cabbage burrito. It is like a cabbage burrito. Wow. Really? Collard burrito. Yeah. All right. These ends I usually just kind of fold them over like that. Hold up that side. And Ooh, hot, mm -hmm. hot. And lay it in its bed. There we go. Rinse and repeat. Yep, over and over and over again. I need to walk over here before she finishes up. She is. Usually she doesn't play quietly by herself. Usually it's Godzilla. <laughs> All right, home stretch. Hey. You picked way too many leaves. I know, that's fine. I'm gonna chop them and freeze them now that they're already blanched. I'll chop and freeze them and then I will have collards already ready to go. Sweet. In the freezer. Just dump that one in there. I hear a spoon scraping the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll make one more small one with that. One more small one. Alrighty. Alright, there's the last, last one. Last one. Now we're gonna pour tomato sauce over the top. How would you do this as like a vegan dish? Just rice, probably. Just rice? Yeah. Could you do beans? Yeah, you could do beans. Rice and beans. Rice totally and beans work. in there? Ooh. Ooh, if you did like rice and chickpeas. Ooh, that would be, would be good. Yeah. Like whenever we have like a veggie centered dish like this. It's not really veggie centered having the beef, the, uh, the bork, the bork in it. Yes. I don't know. Every now and then it's like, hey, how would we eat this if it were vegan or vegetarian? Yeah. Like, what kind of food could we grow if we had to eat a certain way? And so 
you know, it's kind of fun to talk about a dish like this. Yeah. Like, okay, we can grow the collards and we can grow, we know we can grow beans. You know, we've never grown chickpeas. No, we haven't. We're going to have to grow chickpeas this year. Okay. That might be kind of fun. Farewell. All right. See you in a few minutes. About an hour. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's always interesting to talk about various ways we could change dishes to yeah. be... Not that we want to eat vegan, but like how would we change this dish to do that? Yeah, so. or you know, I mean, we raise a lot of our own meat, so it's like, okay, if the meat got low... Yeah, which and we need to stretch yeah, meals. In between harvests. But it's like garden season. When garden season is going on, if you're truly eating out of your garden, you're truly eating with the seasons, you're gonna eat a lot of vegetables in summertime. Right. And in the wintertime, you're probably gonna eat a lot of meat and bread crops. and yeah, you know, yeah, root crops, stuff like that. And carbs. But yeah, like in summertime, man, everything's going on. You've got fruit, you've got vegetables, all sorts of stuff like that over the summer. Yeah. And then when you come back into fall, then you're eating all of those, you know, the fatty acids with the proteins. Right at the time of year that you're actually going to need that when you know your vitamin d intake is low i don't know it's interesting if you actually think about how eating with the seasons eating with the seasons actually works it's kind of a cool thing if you actually go research it all right slice them all up save them for a future dish yep quick and easy fast food <laughs> quick and easy fast food Dinner. It's very crusty bread. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has gotten seconds, but Brett couldn't help himself. Yeah. All right, that meal's always a hit. I'm looking forward to eating that tomorrow. There you go. Good. All righty, that's going to do it for us for today. I hope you guys have a good weekend. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. All right, I wanted to see if she was still in the same spot. Looks like she is. For those of you who have never seen a pig nest, this will be a treat especial. Oh, and Moe's over there giving her moral support. So usually they all sleep in the house. I gave them a hay bale, or most of a hay bale, thinking maybe Sunny Pig would want to make a nest outside. And then I'd given her a little bit of hay right up here. And if you look, she has made herself a nest down here by the water. Why, I don't know. It's supposed to rain tonight, silly pig. But the thing I've noticed is these pigs, when they're farrowing, they like to wait for rough weather. She's all nested up. She's been here all day. I bet ya. I bet you we have piglets, either tonight, heck, watching her, she didn't even get up to see me come. Mo, are you giving moral support? You're a good daddy. Alright, I put up a second fence, keep out the other pigs while Mama has her, her thing. Millie, you're gonna get shocked. Oh, oh, teach you to be nosy cat. <laughs> Maybe don't be nosy. Everybody's interested in these babies. All right, mama, I'll leave you to it. So far in the 20 minutes I've been sitting here, she's had three so far. She's got to have more than four to beat her old record. All right, happy weekend, everybody.